everybody. Welcome back to Contest Prep University and our series on creating a bodybuilding career. I'm Joe Klimzeski with Adam Atkinson. Let's let's continue that metaphor of of this being a performance sport and talking about winning. Because as I was mentioning, a friend who has done some work in the NFL, um, it's all about winning. I mean, you, you that is the goal, and and I think that's what keep us keeps us interested. And when we go back to the first episode talking about pursuit and the love of it and dopamine and goal acquisition, I think you can. Some some people have too big of goals right away. You mentioned clients who come on board; they haven't even competed, and they want to be Mr. Olympia. Um, you know what 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 do you like to talk about with clients in terms of the trajectory of a career and where winning fits in? Yeah, so the trajectory of the career, saying if they are starting from scratch, is just getting on stage and seeing if they enjoy it. I I actually want to use the inquiry I had last night to kind of preface this because we talked a lot about this. Uh, she had been with a coach for about uh, a year and they wanted them to take another year in the off season to compete. And, and I said, I think that's damaging to your, you know, career as a competitor because you're training for something that you have no idea what it's like. So you're investing potentially another year to maybe find out you don't enjoy this. Plus the understanding of the sport, once you've done it, will be so much more valuable in your next off season. You'll see girls with bigger shoulders or girls with bigger glutes. So first of all, just getting that initial experience, finding out if you love it and finding out how much work you need to be good at it to win. I think you really need to have that uh, practice shot uh, first to just really see and really immerse yourself into the sport. And what I had told her is then from there, we can start looking at how long until a nationals. And we said with her, based on her physique, probably within two years after her first season would be doing a national show. And then hopefully within three to four years after that, hopefully a pro card and then climbing that rank from there. Yeah, I, I probably need to do more reading on this personally because my my own bias is I, I'm a dreamer. And I go into something thinking I can do it all. I'm going to win. I'm going to accomplish this. I'm going to get a 4.0 in this degree. I'm going to like, I always have those lofty goals. And, and I think I realize at some point that that helps drive me. You know, that's part of that propelling forward. But then I also know there is that resilience of, well, if I don't quite get there, you know, the the failures only make me stronger. And then, as you said, I understand it more and, and I can try even harder. And then I think all of us have the capacity at some point to realize, OK, maybe I really just totally missed the mark. Maybe that wasn't for me and we're resilient enough to bounce back and use that energy somewhere else, maybe just at a different level of the sport. But I, I, I do think the the thought of winning something is critical. You know, we want something to make it, make it worthy of the pursuit. Um, do, do you channel clients into like, wow, this is probably where you need to start. Don't don't think about this. Let's focus here first. You you said you even want clients to get on stage first, just just to see if you like it. That's that's a win. You know, if if you decide you like it, if you decide you don't, that was mission accomplished for that goal. Yeah, you really have to decide what winning is to each person and. You can create that within the framework of the discussion with the client and kind of setting the expectation of what the goal is. So, uh, and, and even recently, I've had some, you know, long-term masters competitors that are drug-free switch into drug-free federations because they've just been fighting for so long. Muscle growth is starting to get a little slower. Uh, they're not going to do HRT or TRT. And they said, you know what? I'm just going to use the best of my genetics and ability at this point, at this point in my age against drug-free people. And I think that's great because even though 
uh, we're stepping back into maybe a less competitive league. Um, it's still maximally competitive on the standards of the person. And I'm seeing a spark in my athletes by them having a new pursuit and the possibility of winning now because they're on a level playing field. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. And, and I guess in the context of building a long-term career, you enjoy going back to performance sport, you know, you, you watch a team like the Eagles who don't win the Super Bowl. They didn't all quit and say, well, I, I didn't win. So this sucked. Like they just, they go back to work. And so everybody has the goal to win. And I think that is critically important. Find, find a place that's appropriate so that you can reach those milestones along the way. And, and again, pursuit is the important factor longevity i think is an important factor if you want to stay embedded in in this career and endeavor so stay with us next time and and as we finish up these final two episodes in the series we're going to talk about different ways you can make the career even more enjoyable on and off the stage we'll see you next time in contest prep university